हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू टॉपर आई एस एज पार्ट ऑफ अवर डेली सीरीज टूडे ऑल्सो वी विल कंटिन्यू विथ अवर डिस्कशन ऑफ डेली करंट अफेयर्स विच हैव बीन सोर्स फ्रॉम द हिंदू न्यूज पेपर एज वेल एज टेकन फ्रॉम पी आई बी ओके सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड सो द फर्स्ट वन इज विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू ब्रिक्स सो वी हैव कवर्ड इन अवर प्रीवियस वीडियोज दैट द ब्रिक्स समिट इज गोइंग टू बी हेल्ड अ वर्चुअल समिट हेडेड बाय India right so now the outcome of this uh, summit we are going to see what the outcome the summit emphasizes is that they highlighted the importance of principle of non interference in international affairs and said that the disputes and conflict should be resolved by peaceful means so country should not intervene in the uh, internal affairs of other nations so keep away do not intervene non interference and if at all there is conflict between the nations it has to be solved by peaceful means rather than resorting to violent activities kind of terrorism and all this stuff so the summit ended with a declaration so we call it as a new delhi declaration and what it it said that you know uh, usage of you know threat using threat or you know using force against the territorial integrity of a nation or against to you know uh, threaten political independence of any nation and you know uh, coming out with uh, those activities which are inconsistent with the purposes and principles of united nations see purposes and principles of united nations basically what founded on you no know, fundamental human rights so if any acts are violating such kind of rights of the people then they will be considered as inconsistent so such kind of inconsistent activities and the activities that are threatening the territorial integrity or political independence of the nation these are not at all acceptable is what the new delhi declaration is saying and so basically you can see the it is seeking inclusive intra afghan dialogue so other country should not intervene and the dialogue should be resolved you know issue should be resolved peacefully within afghanistan so particularly focused on afghanistan issue and apart from that they also discussed with you know discussed other issues that you get to see in global sphere particularly a conflict in myanmar you know a military has taken over and rohingya muslims issue is also there in myanmar that issue syria a civil war within syria then tension in the korean peninsula north korea and south korea there is a tension between the two and also you know nuclear activities of north korea is also issue for global world then israel palestine violence is going on right and these are all the various and other territorial disputes so apart from you know afghanistan issue they have also discussed few of these issues in the global sphere and the summit also discussed covid-19 pandemic and the strategy to strengthen counter pandemic cooperation and multilateral reforms so how can we cooperate in the post pandemic world okay then it also called against you know playing any kind of politics with the pandemic and covid-19 virus and urged for global effort to eradicate the virus so these are all the you know uh, things which were said out of the summit so basically brics brics is a kind of acronym for, you know which is coined to associate five major emerging economies so brics brazil russia india china and south africa so importance of this uh, grouping is it has a, it is a, it has significant influence on regional affairs okay so that is the influ- influence and since 2009 the governments of the brics states have met annually at formal summits so annually they have met and this year because of pandemic they are conducting the summit online virtual summit was held so outcome was new delhi declaration and what they have pledged to and said the upholding principle of non interference in the international affairs so next news is with respect to indian air force so c295 induction critical for iaf see cabinet committee on security has approved procurement of 56 295 you know military winglet transport aircraft from airbus defense and space sa spain so there is approval to procure 56 c295 military winglet transport aircraft okay so this is the first kind of uh, first project of its kind in which uh, that military aircraft will be manufactured in india using transfer tech, uh, under transfer of technology by a private company okay so private company which is manufacturing these aircrafts will be transferring a technology so after once a trans because of this uh, manufacturing of aircraft will take place within a nation okay and the cost is expected to be around dollar 3 billion 
so out of 56 you know for 16 aircraft will be delivered in a flyaway condition from spain and 40 will be manufactured in india by tata consortium within 10 years of signing the contract so why uh, the see article says it is critical right very important why they are saying critical because see indian air force has you know 56 euros aircrafts which were procured in 1960 so the, uh, see uh, the so many decades have passed and there was a need for upgradation replacement so these uh, c295 you know military winglets will be helping in replacing 56 euros so that is was that is why it was critical then c295 military winglet is a plane of 5 to 10 ton capacity and has a rear ramp door for quick reaction and para dropping of troops and cargoes see meaning it is a kind of military winglet you know uh, having a ton capacity of 5 to 10 and it has you know basically a rear ramp door for quick reaction uh, when in flight a door can be opened and through that door you can drop out the cargo material and also you can allow you know dropping of the troops also people can go down so that is what the door is meaning and project would give a boost to aerospace ecosystem in india wherein several msmes micro small medium enterprises spread over the country would be involved in manufacturing of parts of the aircraft because they are transferring the technology so local domestic manufacturing is also possible because of such kind of contracts then next one is with respect to account aggregator network see basically what is this account aggregator network is you know financial information sharing system okay so account aggregator is a type of rbi regulated entity so what is this says it helps individual securely and digitally access and share information okay and uh, from one financial institution they have account with to any other regulated financial institution in a network so i said financial information sharing system so individual will be having his financial information uh, related to his accounts with a particular financial institution so now he can share this information with other financial systems so from bank to bank different banks all these kind of stuff and data cannot be shared without the consent of the individual so this is a key point and then uh, apart from that the account aggregator system in banking has been started off with eight of india's largest banks so they have come together to start this kind of a system and account aggregator system can make lending and wealth management a lot faster and cheaper because uh, account sharing is possible right information sharing helps you lend faster and create the uh, you know better ease of doing business and all those stuff then a networks as a financial data sharing system could revolutionize investing in credit so how can it revolutionize because it gives millions of consumers greater access and control over their financial records so people have control over their records and it will also you know expand the potential pool of customers for lenders and fintech companies so these people will be getting the information so so that they can lend to more people more customers is their market see basically account as i said account aggregator is an interoperable data blind consent manager data blind meaning uh, uh, you know aas account aggregators cannot read consumer data they cannot resell consumer data so they are not aware of what it they can only exchange work on behalf of consumers customers so account aggregators enable consumers to selectively share and even revoke data once shared okay so consumers have the authority to share even if they want to share and they can also even revoke the data that has been shared so aas merely have a fiduciary duty fiduciary duty meaning you, you mean working on behalf of your customers so account aggregators will be acting on behalf of customers consumers so their focus will be you know increasing the benefit of the consumers so these will be regulated by rbis and sharing digitally signed and encrypted data so remember account aggregators uh, interoperable interoperable data blind consent manager they will be acting as a fiduciary entities which help you know consumers to store their information digitally securely and they can also exchange this information with other financial institutions so can be asked in a prelims do know these points can be expected question in uh, prelims so that's it for today you can also download the pdf of this document in the link that is shared below and do download topper institute app 
so that you get access to n number of these videos which will be helpful in your upsc preparation so that's it thank you